KCIM is the place to listen on 1380 AM and 95.1 FM. This is KCIM Carol. KCIM Sports presents the Pizza Ranch Saturday Morning Coaches Show with Sports Director Jeff Blankman. Thank you very much, John, and good Saturday morning, everybody. Welcome here to the Pizza Ranch Coaches Show. we got, again, nine coaches going to be joining us uh, coming up this morning. Uh, Katie Cook with the Carroll Girls basketball team, Randy Beeson with the Carroll Boys basketball team, uh, Tracy Hoffman with the Kemper Girls wrestling team, Deb Danner with the Carroll Boys swim team, Shane Vaughn with the Kemper Boys wrestling team, Eric Nago with the Carroll Boys wrestling team, Sam Vanami with the Carroll Girls wrestling team, uh, also Andrew Clank with the Kemper Girls basketball Basketball team and Sean Minahan with the Kemper Boys basketball team all sent to, to join us here this morning. But we're going to run you through what happened in local sports last night. We're going to start on the girls side of things with the Carroll girls picked up their first win over Ballard. It was probably around 2004, 2005, the last time the Tigers had beat the Bombers, but they do it on the road at number eight Ballard last night, winning it to 54 to 45. Chloe Cook led way with 17 points added at four rebounds. Our Weaver falls to Woodbine on the road, 62 to 14. Delaney Shirky with seven points and six rebounds. It was Peyton Chardin losing to Caminita on the road, 66 to 18. It was uh, Kalia Minahan finishing up with four points. East Sac County down to East uh, GTRA 49 to 26. A McKenna Steiger 18 points to go with five rebounds and a couple of assists. Glidden Ralston falls at Booyer Valley 52 33. Tyler Jansen finishing with 16 points. Ike Manning losing down at Trainer 59 to 30. Anna Stangle led the way last night with that nine points to go with that two rebounds. South Central Calhoun fell at home to Emmitsburg 32 to 25. Brennan McAllister with seven point six rebounds and five steals. Over on the boys' side of things, we had two area schools remain undefeated. One suffered their first loss of the season. We'll start with the Carroll Tigers as they fall at Ballard last night. First loss for the Tigers as they fall 64-48. to Evan Hammer, 19 points, 8 rebounds, and a couple of blocked shots. Glenn Ralston loses at Booyer Valley, 40-37. to Jonathan Bergmeyer with it, 20 points. It was Audubon falling at Underwood, 82-46. to Edward Miller leads the way in the loss with 16 points. Coon Rapids Baird rolls my East Union. They remain undefeated, 86 to 44. Now, just the last Thursday, so eight or nine days ago, nine days ago, Kate Barons broke the individual record for Coon Rapids Baird for most threes made in a game with nine. He broke it last night, shooting 11 of 16. From the three-point line. So again, 11 made threes last night for Cade Barons. He finishes up with 37 points. Arweva falls to Woodbine at 68 to 56. It was Blaine Smith with 19 points and four assists. Esac County, our other team that remains undefeated. They pull away from GTRA to win it 64 to 52. Ryan Clare, 23 points, 15 rebounds, and four assists. It was South Central Calhoun winning their fourth straight down in Emmitsburg, 52 to 40. Gavin Banna, 21 points, 6 rebounds, and 3 assists. Icam Manning falling to trainer last night, 66-35. to 35. It was Ross Kuzel leading away with 9 points to go with 3 rebounds and 2 steals. Peyton Chardan down at Caminita, nothing reported for that game yet. In wrestling action, uh, Kemper girls were at Fort Dodge's tournament last night. Girls wrestled with just three girls. They would finish 15th with 26 points. Sadie Smith and Kyla Wiskus both finishing in 5th place. And the Audubon girls were at the Western Iowa Conference Tournament down at Riverside. They finished 4th with 65 points. Jordan Mulford took 2nd place. Rachel Reinerson finished in 4th place. Laura McCarvo was 3rd. Michelle Brooks 5th. Uh, Emily Four and 4th. And Elena Harbour finished up in 2nd place. And that is a look at uh, sports on this uh, Saturday morning right here on the Pizza Ranch Coaches Show. We'll step away. We'll talk with Katie Cook about that big victory over Ballard when we come back right here on the Pizza Ranch Coaches Show. Here at Pizza Ranch, we love our basketball, just like you love everyone's favorite buffet. Hot, fresh pizza, the country's best chicken, fresh, cool salad bar, and dessert options that are so good, it's like sinking the winning shot at the buzzer. Pizza Ranch is a perfect meal option every day of the week. And to make it even sweeter, we have extended hours every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Whoa, that's good. Pizza Ranch, located just off Highway 30 in Carroll. Open seven days a week. Welcome here to the Pizza Ranch Coaches Show. 
Thursday morning, starting things off, of course, with uh, Carroll Girls head basketball coach Katie Cook as the Tigers come off uh, an outstanding win last night against a uh, high-ranked uh, Baller team came in. I think ranked number eight, Katie. Uh, congratulations on that one. We don't have the exact year. I did reach out to Shelly uh, Halaska last night after I heard Nick talking about that it had been prior to 2006. She did tell me that she beat Ballard during her career, but uh, I hadn't found out what year that was yet, so I know that had to be either 04 or 05 probably. But uh, congratulations. What a win last night. Thank you. Thank you. Still reeling. You know, it's going to make for a good weekend. <laughs> Perfect way to start it, right? What went right uh, for you guys uh, on Friday to be able to go over there and, and, and beat a really good basketball team? And the, and the girls really just bought into the defensive game plan. They they did a solid job uh, stopping Ballard's best player. Um and and then on the offensive end, we shared the ball. Um, we showed more patience than we've shown all year. We really worked to to just take really good shots. And you know, it always helps Jeff when you make them. So. <laughs> yeah, four girls in double digits. Um, you mentioned you shared the basketball. Was it just the extra pass, or or what was it with the sharing that helped get you guys good looks? You know, I think just. We changed things up a little bit. Um, we've been we we played four girls out on the perimeter instead of just three, like we have been all year. And I think it opens things up a little bit for them. It creates some different options for everybody. Um, but also, we've just been we've been passive a little bit, and, and so it was nice to see us last night be a little more aggressive off the dribble, um, and and just you know, walk that line between patience and and being aggressive on offense. Who were who were the girls that were more aggressive, or was it pretty much everybody? You know, pr- pretty much everybody. Um, you know, it, pr- most of, mostly our guards. They uh, they seem more confident out there uh, with the ball. Um, it, was, it was just nice to see. Like you mentioned earlier, four girls in double digits. That's huge. I mean, that's a that's a well rounded team. And Caitlin Aiden with seven assists, Coach. But the one thing that jumped off the board at me uh, the moment I heard the final from Nick last night, holding Ballard to 45. This is a team that a lot of times uh, likes to create turnovers. They're really aggressive on the defensive, and that's how they create their offense. So I'm guessing you guys didn't have a ton of turnovers and then played a good defensive game yourself? Yeah, you're right. Uh, we, it looks, we had 13 turnovers. Um, which is a huge improvement from a few games ago. I think there were a stretch there where we had, were at tw- sitting at 25 plus turnovers a game for a while there. So just to have 13 against a great team like Ballard um, shows tremendous growth with our girls. Um, they've really kind of bought into taking care of the ball. And not to mention, we started running for turnovers. <laughs> <laughs> what a funny, what a funny coincidence. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and and then they really bought into the defensive game plan, like I said, and, and just kind of it's doing little things that make a big defense a big difference on the defensive end um, to slow Ballard down. Coach, let's bounce back to uh, Winterset on, on Tuesday night. Uh, ended up falling there, uh, forty-seven to thirty-six. Uh, was it one of those nights offensively? Was it turnovers? Uh, what happened on Tuesday? Uh, not so much turnovers. We just we didn't shoot the ball well. Uh, watching it back, we you know we got some good looks, um, but we, we just couldn't get anything to fall. I think in the first half we were kind of like I mentioned earlier, we were a little bit passive on offense, where we just, we just need to be um, looking to score more, looking to drive the ball more, um, making just being harder to guard in general. Um, I think we only had two points in the second quarter, Mm -hmm. Uh, so it was a pretty slow second quarter. We had a very strong second half um, against Winterset, so that was something. I mean, at least we could kind of end with, I mean, we were disappointed in the loss, but we finished the game well, so we could kind of carry that momentum into, all right, now we need to put a whole game together. So it was nice to be able to do that last night against Ballard. 
Coach, uh, and we have one more game we need to talk about quick. Uh, last Saturday, as you guys had three in this last week since we talked the last time, uh, you guys hosted Storm Lake. Uh, that was a closer game than that final score, 60-46 to 46 the final, so it wasn't any kind of a blowout, but they seemed to pull away there in the fourth quarter. Uh, right. I think we, we got in a situation where we had to foul, um, if I remember correctly. But yeah, I mean, a really good Storm Lake team. They've, they've yes. made a lot of progress over the past year. Um, they have some really good athletes. Fantastic shooter in, uh, gosh, you gonna... Dahan. Yes, Dahan. Yep. Dahan. Yeah, what a great player. And she was, she was feeling it Saturday. So, um, yeah, that was, I think early on, that's, that's a good thing for us to see. Uh, it was a good game for us to learn from. So, um, we're just trying to take one thing at a time and, and, check some boxes uh, so we can continue to grow. Coach, you guys back in action Tuesday uh, on the road again. Three straight road trips in the in the Raccoon River Conference. Uh, you know, uh, Randy needs to have a little conversation with the rest of the ads on the scheduling. I would think on that <laughs> one. But, uh, but uh, back on the road again on Tuesday. Yes, yes, we're heading to Bondurant for our. Um, they have a strong inside game. Uh, so yeah, it's just our last game before heading into Christmas break. So hopefully we can we can get the W and head into break with with the two wins in a row under our belt. That'd be a, that'd be a really big confidence boost for kind of a young group, I imagine. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, but you know, it, it's we took a two hour bus ride to Winterset on Tuesday and, and struggled to put a strong first half together. So hopefully we can figure out how to, you know, make that bus trip again, two hours, <laughs> get off, be ready to go. Um, yeah, it's just the joys of, of our conference and, and some of the trips we have to take, but uh, we'll figure it out. Absolutely. Well, Coach, as always, it's fun catching up with you. Congratulations again on that win last night, and uh, best of luck coming up on Tuesday. I think we've got Nick Brinks down there bringing you that uh, game again coming up on Tuesday night. Sounds great. Thank you, Jess. You bet. Uh, again, head coach uh, Katie Cook with the Carroll Girls basketball team back with more from the um, Pizza Ranch Coaches Show right here on KCIM. Good friends and customers like you are what made Stone Printing and Office Supply what it is today. May your holiday be filled with joy and the coming year be overflowing with all the good things in life. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from everyone at Stone Printing and Office Supply in Carroll. Back here on the uh, Peach Ranch Coaches Show on this Saturday morning, talking right now with Randy Beeson, head boys basketball coach with the uh, Carroll Tigers. Tigers suffered their first loss of the season last night, uh, falling to Ballard uh, by a final of 64-48. to But the Tigers do go 2-1 and one since the last time we caught up with Coach here last Saturday. Coach, as always, appreciate you joining us on this Saturday morning. I know you got that uh, wrestling tournament to be working at uh, coming up yet this morning, so I know it's a busy day, so appreciate the time. Yeah, no problem, Jeff. You bet. Uh, you got to start with that one last night. Uh, a tough start for you guys. Couldn't get shots to fall. Sounded like some turnovers hurt, and sounds like they came out and shot the three well early. Yeah, uh, it wasn't pretty last night. I uh, gave up 19 points in the first quarter. Uh, we had a three towards the end of the first quarter to get us to nine points. Uh, we we turned it over too much and missed some easy ones. Uh, uh so it wasn't pretty, and the second quarter wasn't much better. We only scored uh, seven points in the second quarter, and we're down 20 uh, at halftime, 36 to 16. So, uh, you know, a little unorthodox from the first few games, uh, averaging about 60 points a game, and only scoring 16 points and a half is not usually going to get it done. So, uh, but give Ballard credit; they uh, they were scrappy and they got their hands on a lot of basketballs and very tough with the basketball and uh they uh they got all the 50 50 balls and made plays and uh it just wasn't a great night for us uh, on either end of the floor offense or defense do you just chalk it up to one of those nights coach or or what do you chalk up th- that to uh <laughs> that's a good question I, I wish i had a good answer for it uh you know, we've we've played some pretty good basketball. We've we've yep. competed. Uh, we've been in games. We've made plays down the stretch. Uh, but for whatever reason, uh, we we weren't very good. Uh, we turned it over too much. Uh, we didn't execute our stuff very well. And 
uh, give them credit. I mean, they, they went from man to zone, coming back and forth a little bit, and we got pretty stagnant, and uh, they got some pretty good defenders. The Gibson kid is a really good player, a uh, really good defender, and I felt like uh, for whatever reason we didn't play with the confidence that uh, we had been playing with. So uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's something about Ballard's gym or what it is, but we seem to struggle when we when we go to their place. And uh, it was just uh, the case tonight in the second half. Uh, we thought maybe if we could cut into that lead and, and get it down to 10 points going to the fourth quarter that uh, we'd have a chance to put ourselves in position to, to get back in the game. And uh, it was still a 20-point lead after the third quarter. And even though it ended up being 16, uh, it, it wasn't. It was never close. So uh, give Ballard credit. I mean, it goes to show you got to be ready every single night, uh, whether you're playing at home or on the road against uh, any team in our conference. So give them credit. They played the, played uh, a really good good game last night, and uh, we just got to find a way to keep them better. Coach, probably the disappointing part is is the way you guys were able to close out against Winterset on the road. On Tuesday, you closed out, you know, kind of pulling away and extending on a two-point lead there going into that fourth quarter. So uh, the guys showed some really good heart on, on Tuesday night uh, against a good ball club and a good, solid defensive ball club. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we did a really good job defensively in the fourth quarter, only giving up uh, six points. And we did a good job of taking care of the basketball and, and making some plays. And uh, that, that was a good win for us uh, anytime going winter set. You know, with their 2-3 zone, uh, with some of our young guys, you never know how they're going to respond. And we turned the ball over uh, too much in that game, too. But we were still able to uh, get enough stops defensively and make them miss enough uh, uh, to hang on to it. So uh, our guys did a really nice job executing down the stretch uh, a couple different times. We ran some time off the clock because uh, we had the lead and then, uh, Evan Hammer made a really nice pass to Payne Wardell for a layup late and made some free throws down the stretch. So uh, really good job uh, against Winter. So that was, that was a good win for us. Coach, and we do need to talk real quick about last Saturday. Uh, knocked off at that time an undefeated Storm Lake Ball Club. I haven't looked to see how they did this week, but uh, uh, that's, a, that's a good ball club. They've got some, some really, really good ball players on that, and I just looked. Uh, they suffered their second loss of the season tonight falling to Estherville Lincoln Central, but that was a good win last Saturday. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Storm Lake is, is a lot better than what they've been the last couple of years, and they got some young kids on that team and two or three kids that are uh, really good basketball players. So, uh, I mean, the Coon kid is getting D1 looks already as a sophomore and, uh, he, he can shoot it and he can drive it. And he's super athletic. Uh, we gave up 20 points to him, but, uh, they were tough shots and, uh, we made it, made it tough on him. And, uh, it was a good win. Uh, once again, it was, it was fun to play at home and, uh, a good environment, good atmosphere and on, a, on a Saturday night. But uh, our guys did a really good job. We had four guys in double figures. Uh, Evan scoring 23 and Kevin Langling really got it going in the fourth quarter, made some threes and, and attacked the basket. And uh, Stone Stephen Allard scored 14. Peyton Wardell scored 10. So uh, it was really balanced and we had a lot of guys step up and uh, it was a really good win. Coach, you guys close out the the prior to Christmas break schedule Tuesday down at Bondurant for our uh, tease Katie here just a moment ago that uh, you need to talk to the other ads three straight road trips uh, you know to close out the the first half of the season for you guys but uh, it's another long road trip in a way do you guys really kind of need this one just to not go into the break having dropped two straight yeah uh, Christmas is a lot more fun when you can win that uh, that last one right before Christmas break so. Uh, you know, talking to Nick Brinks last night, he said, well, is that the plan to lose one early so that you can make sure you win that one right before <laughs> Christmas break? So it's never the plan to lose a game, but, right. uh, you know, sometimes losing, uh, helps you, uh, refocus and, and get your, get your mind right and really pay attention to some little things that might have been, uh, overlooked, you know, and, and some of the, some of the wins. So, uh, yeah, it'll it'll be a big game for us. Bondurant's got a nice team. Uh, they got two really good players in the Miller kid and the Bergeron uh, kid. Uh, they they've got off to a good start, so uh, it should be a good one. And 
you know, a good AD would, would make sure the scheduling is not as crazy as what it was, uh, like it's been for us. But, uh, we, we helped out one of the schools, uh, they were hosting a wrestling tournament on Saturday and wanted to have the night off on Friday. So we swapped the home and away, which, which made that four home games to start and three road games to end it before Christmas break. But, uh, it's good for our guys, you know, it's, yep. it's fun to play at home, but, you're going to have to find a way to win games on the road as well. So uh, it'll be a good bounce-back game for us, and hopefully we can have a good day of practice on Monday and be ready to go on Tuesday to uh, end the first part of the year on a high note. Well, Coach, we'll have Nick down there again on Tuesday night for you guys. I appreciate you joining us here today, and I'm sure I'll bump into you out at the wrestling tournament at some point here this morning. Yeah, sounds good. I appreciate the coverage, Jeff. Head coach Randy Beeson again with the Carroll Boys basketball team will be back. We'll turn our focus over to Kemper Girls Wrestling when we come back here on the Peach Ranch Coaches Show. It's time for the Crusader Corner. Hello, my name is Jordan Kinkle, and I am the high school speech coach at Coon Rapids Baird Community Schools. Currently, students are working on a short film to present at the Iowa High School Speech Association's District Large Group Speech Contest in January. I'm really excited for students to present this film as it really carries an important message we should all live by. Students are working hard to edit the film in order to make it the best it can be. Students are focused on improving the lighting, camera angles, shot stability, and much more. We hope you can attend the district speech contest on January 20th at Denison High School. We hope we can make it to state. If you can't make it to the contest, please plan to attend the Fine Arts Showcase in May. Go Crusaders! Crusaders Corner is being brought to you by Poet Bioprocessing of Coon Rapids. One of the most efficient ethanol production facilities in the U.S. Tune in each Saturday and Sunday morning. Go Jeff Blankman joined on this Saturday morning, of course, by Kimber Girls Head Wrestling Coach Tracy Hoffman. And Coach, as always, good to talk to you and appreciate your time here this morning. Yes, good to talk to you with you too, Jeff. You bet. Just one meet for for us to talk about on this Saturday morning. You guys made the trip up to Fort Nadja. 16-team tournament last night. Uh, took just three girls up there uh, and actually did very well. You finished up uh, with 26 points in 15th place, but uh, you had two girls go 3-1 and one on the night, both of them finishing up in 5th place. So, you know, um, team totals don't mean anything when you're only taking three kids. I have a feeling you're pretty pleased about last night. Yes, we are little, like I said, but we are mighty. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with Sadie. Um, Sadie Smith uh, finished fifth, uh, won her opening round match, lost in the quarterfinals, but then came back uh, to win three matches after that, uh, got all of them by fall. Um, so uh, what stood out for her, and, and how was she able to, to bounce back after that loss in the quarters? Um, okay, so, yeah, she had a pigtail match right away to get into the bracket, and um, we met up with the Perry girl then, and this girl, she's pretty good. We've seen her at other tournaments. Sadie hasn't um, wrestled her yet, but some of the other girls have, and she's always seated at the top of the bracket, and Sadie, she had her, man. She, we were going 8-8 eight and eight, uh, into the third, and we just got caught in the end and got beat, but she was controlling her and, you know, did great the whole entire match. Did did you like the way you saw her bounce back from that then to to be able to get you know those other couple of wins to to finish up in in fifth which is at that point as good as she could do? Yes, yes, and she has been just killing it. Like last year, we just had to keep kind of hounding her all the time to take your shots, take your shots, and this year she is starting to take her shots, and man, she's getting good at those. Talk about that a little bit. Uh, where where is she taking that opportunity to take those shots? Um, so she's just kind of just working her way in. She gets past the arm, and, you know, she gets in there and gets a double leg and is able to get them down. And like I said, now that she's actually doing it, she's just getting stronger and stronger each time. Where would you kind of see her first starting to gain that confidence? Do you remember which tournament that was? Um, I felt like Audubon, she was kind of doing it a little bit, but the last couple – Probably the last two tournaments, I've really seen her go after it and taking them. Is she pretty good once she gets inside then after taking that shot, I'm imagining? Yes, and another thing she's super strong on is her mat returns. That child can pick up those girls and just slam them around. (laughs) (laughs) I get the sense she might like that. 
Yes, I think she enjoys it. <laughs> Coach, the other wrestler that finished fifth for you last night uh, was Kyla Wiskus. Uh, again, kind of similar to, to Sadie, won her her, uh, her opening round, uh, fell in the quarterfinals, and then came back to win uh, the consolation semis and also the fifth place match, and all of her wins also by fall. What stood out for you about the way Kyla wrestled? So Kyla, she's just, you know, these last couple of meets, she's just improved so much, and I just love watching this child wrestle. Um so the first girl, she just, you know, kept stopping all of her shots and stuff, and she just worked her way into pinning her. Then the second round, she had a girl from Eagle Grove that was 25-0, and zero, so we knew that was going to be a challenge for us. But she took that one with a smile after she got done, and she just came back in. And um, we saw a lot of head throwing for her tonight, like the girls would be head throwing her, and she was getting really good at getting her leg over and just being able to flip them through and roll off of her back. And she just... The improvement she's made over these last two meets, I just, I'm so proud of that child. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it sounds like she's really gaining a lot of confidence. Oh, yes, definitely. I think so. What, where is her strength? What's the best part of her game right now as a wrestler? So, I'm, I'm not going to lie. She's doing really good from being on the bottom and being able to get the reversals or flip her way through, and she's just... I mean, she's good at getting in there to take her shots, but a lot of times she gets sprawled out on, and then we have to work back from the bottom and get on top. So, The final wrestler to talk about last night for you guys, Allie Summerfeld, did finish 0-2 on the night, but uh, lost 4-2 to uh, in the consolation first round. So right there had a chance. How did that matchup kind of play out for her? So she had an Algona girl, and that, she was, yeah, she, Allie just had um, probably the biggest, hardest bracket tonight. There was She was the only one that had a 16-man bracket, and there was just a lot of tough girls there today. And how did she wrestle in her second match? Um, so she started off strong, and she did something that probably shocked us coaches and every, all the girls on the team. Right off the whistle, she just went in and ankle-picked the girl, and we're like, wow, nice. we haven't seen that. Yeah. <laughs> so that caught us all off guard, so she, she just was in there trying to take her shots and stuff, and we just couldn't get it done. Is that the biggest thing for her right now is just once she gets in there and gets those shots? Yep. And I think kind of all the girls, just getting them to, you know, get in the right position to take the shots is a major thing that we're going to have to start working on. Well, you'll have plenty of time after Monday. Uh, you guys have your home meet coming up on Monday night. This is going to be a fun one. Uh, who, who's going to be there, and what are you looking forward to on Monday night? Well, we I don't know. We we have about 19 teams coming, so, and it is varsity and JV. We, there's not quite as many numbers in the JV, but we do have the JV that will be there also. And I don't know. It's going to be good. We have Carol High, Spencer, Lamars, Audubon, a lot of the girls that are going to be in our regionals will be there. All right, Coach. Well, I tell you what, I appreciate you joining us here today. Wish you the best of luck, and I'm sure I'll catch you out there later today at the uh, the Tiger Wrestling Tournament watching Kemper. All right. Thanks, Jeff. You bet. Head Coach Tracy Hoffman again with the Kemper Girls Wrestling Team back with a more from the Peach Ranch Coaches Show right here on KCIM. Here at Pizza Ranch, we love our basketball, just like you love everyone's favorite buffet. Hot, fresh pizza, the country's best chicken, fresh, cool salad bar, and dessert options that are so good, it's like sinking the winning shot at the buzzer. Pizza Ranch is a perfect meal option every day of the week. And to make it even sweeter, we have extended hours every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Whoa, that's good. Pizza Ranch, located just off Highway 30 in Carroll, open seven days a week. We're back here on the Pizza Ranch Coaches Show talking a little Carol Boy Swimming as head coach Deb Danner joins us. As in the Tigers coming off a very busy week, uh, swam Saturday, Monday, and Thursday this past week. So, Deb, I appreciate you giving us some time on this Saturday morning, and, and hopefully you've got a chance to catch your breath a little bit after this last week. Oh, yeah, it, it's it's been a busy week. So, yeah, this is our my downtime right now. So, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> It's not downtime for the boys, but it is for me. So, yeah. Do you like having three meets like that close together, kind of heading into the break like you guys did this last week? No, not really. Um, nobody really likes having three meets in a row like that. Um, 
no matter what part of the season it is. It's just too much. The boys don't get a chance to recover. Um, so, yeah, it, it's not ideal, but um, it is how it is. It's a short season with a lot of meat, so it's bound to happen. <laughs> Do you guys feel like you came through it pretty good, though? Absolutely, yeah. The boys, uh, they've been doing a fantastic job. Um, yeah, I, I feel like they, they came through this very well. Um, you know, now we've got next couple of weeks off, and, you know, we'll we'll have a chance to um, – be prepared and, and ready for our next meet. Yeah, we'll talk to you about the fun you're going to have here uh, over the next, uh, you know, two <laughs> weeks here in just a moment. As as everybody hears you laugh there, Deb. Uh, let's let's bounce back to. I remember last Saturday you were talking about how you guys wanted to go over and win that Des Moines Hoover Invitational. Uh, you won it. Uh, you, you got by Boone. Uh, you have finished with 426. Boone had 384. How were you guys able to go over and do what you wanted to and win that meet? Yeah, you know, the boys go over, uh, you know, they they had the right mindset, ready to swim fast. Um, you know, th- this was their goal was to win it. It's been a few years since we've, we've won that meet. So, you know, they really wanted to take it again this year. So, you know, a, a big part of it is the mindset. They are physically ready to swim, and it's it's always a mind, a mind game at that point. So, yeah, you know, we, we just got them prepared mentally and – um, yeah, they did a fantastic job swimming, and, um, you know, with every win, it, it just sparks the next race to win, too, and and it just snowballs from there, so it, it's, you know, it, it really works out great for those guys. Nine fa- first-place finishes overall, seven in individual events, and two in the relays last weekend, but you also had some guys really cutting some time. Uh, Brody Skarin dropped four seconds on his 200 IM and at 300, uh, three seconds in the 100 breast. And uh, Kyle Sendrup and uh, Mac Makovic uh, both dropped a couple of seconds in their 100 backstroke. Were those the, the most impressive performances for you, or did somebody else stand out as well? Um, no, like uh, we had Landon uh, Cadwell. He's uh, new to us this year. Um, wasn't real sure what he was going to swim. He he knows he likes swimming fly. Um, really haven't tried him out in the fly yet. But um, so we it's like, well, let's give him a shot in the in the 500. And the kids have been doing really good. So he he his first time swimming it, he went a, a 535, and then uh, Saturday he went a 527. And it's like, all right, we, we can take this. We got something to work with here. So you know he he's just going to keep dropping time from there. So. Um, that's pretty exciting. He's just been a really, really nice addition to the team. Coach, you guys didn't have much of a turnaround. You had Sunday off, then you had to go up to Sioux City on Monday to take on a good Sioux City team. Technically, your first loss of the year is as you fell 115 to, to 71 that day. Uh, but you mentioned before that, that that's a really good deep team with some fast times from last year. How did you feel like things went up there on Monday? Yeah, um it could have been better. The boys, I feel, were just a little bit intimidated, um, and that will really slow you down. Uh, you know, if I, I don't mind the loss if they put in the effort, if they swim their fast times, but um, we kind of had a little problem with that, too. We weren't swimming great times, um, you know, and I'm sure a little bit has to do with uh, just one day off doesn't really help matters at all. So, um you know, it, it's it's a tough turnaround for a tough meet. So uh, it would have been nice to have two, three days off to prepare, but, um, you know, that's just how that meet works for us. So, you know, we, we try and get through it every year the best that we can. You guys had to turn around again and just swim in a couple of days. You got a host, though, on uh, Thursday night. You hosted both Boone and Atlantic. Won both of those fairly easily. And, again, you had several guys dropping times on Thursday night that and and sounded like guys swim in different events that night as well. Oh, definitely. So they they got to swim one of their normal events and then they had to swim an event that they normally don't swim. So you know they they had a lot of fun with that and uh, yeah you know we we come out with some pretty decent times there and um, yeah you know the, the guys kind of enjoy doing that every now and then. So you know we we try and do that at least a couple of times through the season so you know this was the first one and we'll we'll try it again another meet and 
See what other kind of times we can come up with. Mentioned to Matt here a moment ago, drop in time before he dropped time again on Thursday night. So is he starting to really come on? Yeah, actually, th- this kid is really starting to do something with his swimming. So, it, you know, it was a thrill to watch that. He swam the 100 free, and, um, yeah, you know, he dropped about six seconds in it. And, you know, I look over at him, and it's like, <laughs> Matt, what the heck? And he's like, he just shrugs his shoulders like, I don't know. <laughs> it's like, so, you know, you love seeing that because it's like he didn't feel like he did anything different, but yet he was a lot faster. So, you know, that's fantastic. So, I mean, we, we'll just keep moving forward with that. And, and I mean, he, he's, he's going to come up with some pretty decent times by the end of the season. And Coach, uh, you were chuckling here a little bit ago. We mentioned that you, you get a couple of weeks now with no meets, uh, none coming up this week. And then, of course, it's the week in between Christmas and New Year. So you get a chance. The guys are going to be swimming a lot uh, in practice, it sounds like, the next couple of weeks. They are going to swim a lot, yes. They are going to be tired, <laughs> um, <laughs> right? Uh, no, we we have some pretty tough practices. We, um, you know, we, we don't have any meat, so we, we were able to go a little bit harder. Um, we'll have a day or two in there where they'll get to have a little bit of fun. Um, it is Christmas break after all, so I do let them have a little bit of fun. But uh, the days that we are working hard, they are going to definitely work very hard. So, um, you know, and they, they know this every year. They're prepared for it. So, um, you know, they'll, they'll do fine with it. They'll, they'll get through it like they always do. Well, Coach, I tell you what, fun to catch up with you each and every week. You get a few-week break now from me. Uh, we'll be back talking to you uh, right after the season gets going again in January. So appreciate you joining us here today. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, and enjoy these next two weeks of practice. Yes, Merry Christmas to you too. Deb Danner again, the head boys at swim coach for the Carroll Tigers. We're back with more from the Pete Ranch Coaches Show here on KCIM. It's a clearance event here at Pringer Summerland. Matt, store-wide savings going on. Yeah, right now, take advantage of up to 80% off list prices. We've got a dining room set from Glenwood that's only $3.99. If you're in the market for a fireplace council, we've got those starting at only $2.88. Looking for a reclining sofa, we've got the powered Rutherford sofa for only $9.99. Great savings going on right now with a clearance event. Shop Pringer Slumberland, 1318 Highway 30 West in Carroll. Talking at Kemper Boys Wrestling here on the Pizza Ranch Coaches Show on this Saturday morning. Joining us right now is head coach Shane Vaughn. And coach, as always, appreciate the time. Yeah, glad to be here. You bet, coach. You guys uh, had a couple of uh, meets. Uh, you were over in Ogden last Saturday. Got a chance to come over and catch that meet for a while uh, and stuff. I uh, thought you guys wrestled pretty well, especially that first matchup against Gilbert, and then uh, Thursday night travel down for a, uh, a double duel down at Lewis Central, uh, took on Atlantic and Lewis Central, uh, going 0-2, but wrestling really tight in that Lewis Central match. So kind of your overall thoughts on the week uh, from last Saturday through Thursday night. How did you feel like this last week went? You know, it's kind of a mixed bag. Um, we have some guys that are wrestling pretty well and some guys that have a little bit to figure out yet still. Um, and some guys have been, you know, on both ends of the spectrum there where one day they look really good and the next not so much. And uh, we're just still kind of in that, that growing process. Um, you know, we've got, thankfully, got a little time to figure it out, but we're getting that part of the year where you want to start figuring it out sooner rather than later. Let's start with Thursday night. The Lewis Central match ended up losing forty to thirty-six. But uh, when five and five, you and I were talking during the commercial break. Five and five in the match as a wrestle, uh, and it looks like you got, had some guys uh, wrestle really well. And one of those, Nicholas Wordemont, did pick up a sudden victory. How did he get that? Just going after and um, getting his offense in the, the overtime period. Um, you know, and that was the match where when Nick came off, we told him like, "Hey." You know, if we keep our foot on the gas the whole time, that doesn't have to be overtime. But when the time came to get it done, he went out and he found his shot and got got the takedown. So you like to see that out of a freshman. But, you know, I'd, I'd like to see him kind of widen that gap next time and not make it so tight. One of the other matches that, uh, as I was studying him on Thursday night, kind of jumped out me. Tate Barrett, 558, gets the pin. Uh, how did he get that late takedown and, and get that pin? That was a really, uh, really good example of what I want our our wrestlers and really our program to look like. Um, you know, that was a 2-0 match going into the third period. Tate was up 2-0, and uh, gets the escape, takedown, let up, takedown, let up, takedown. He just kind of, you know, t- 
took him down and let him up until he broke the kid and ended up throwing him and pinning him with about 10 seconds left. Well, hit the throw with about 10 left, got the fall with two. So just kind of, you know, it was a tight match that he broke open just by relentless effort. So that was really cool to see. Sounds like conditioning really good for him. Is it like that for the rest of the team, do you think, as well? We can start to use that as a weapon. Um, you know, it's something I'd like, to, you know, like I said before, I'd like to see more out of our guys. Um, just that relentless, nonstop, go, go, go type of mentality. But we're getting there. Um, we're not there yet, but we're getting there. Coach, uh, who else wrestled well for you, did you think, on Thursday night? Maybe even some guys that did, didn't pick up a victory between that and the matchup uh, against Atlantic. I know M- McGuire Hoyt, the only one that actually won an actual matchup uh, that, that was on the mats uh, against Atlantic. So who else wrestled well for you? Well, McGuire wrestled well, um, like you just said, and even the loss against Lewis Central, he looked pretty tough. Um, you know, fought right there with the tough kid. Um, Owen Neppel had some good moments here and there. His LC match was pretty good. Um, had, some again, some good moments at, against Atlantic. Um, Bryce Wiskus was looking tough. Uh, you know, we, like I said kind of in the, in the start of the interview, like we've got guys that look really tough in spurts. And just getting guys to look that tough all six minutes, every time out, every day, every duel, every tournament, that's, that's kind of what we're working towards now, um, building that consistency up rather than just the flashes of greatness. Let's bounce back to last Saturday. You guys were at the Ogden Duels. Uh, you beat Gilbert 45-31, uh, to 31, uh, lost to Carroll 51-22, uh, fell to Ogden in a tight one 42-38, to 38. Uh, lost in another fairly close one to uh, North Butler, forty-five to thirty-three. Uh, beat Regina um, by a final of sixty to twelve. Uh, you finished seventh overall as a team. What did, what did you take away from Saturday? You know that was another one of those days that was kind of hard to know what to feel. Um, coming in, we had goals to place a lot higher than seventh, um, but some teams showed up to wrestle, and you know, hats off to them. They wrestled tough. Um, but we had guys, you know, again, guys that wrestled well. Uh, Tate looked good. Bryce looked good. Mm-hmm. Earl Beck looked good in a few of his. Um, Caleb Hoffman went 5-0, and wrestling real tough. Owen wrestled tough. So we have guys that are getting there. Um, you know, like to, again, like to see more consistency. Um, we got to find ways to stay off our back. We're getting getting pinned way too much. And so that's something that is going to be a, a kind of point of emphasis as we go through the back half of the year is, just how to keep matches close, how to keep yourself into it instead of going down in a big hole early and giving up a fall. Coach, you got to wrestle in the new gym over there. Uh, talked to Coach Noggle earlier here in the show. They were over there as well. Um, how do you like the new setup uh, compared to you know some of the old days where you had to be in the in the in the wrestling room, kind of in the back area there off the gym, and then sometimes in the cafeteria area? So nice to be in that big gym most of the day. Yeah, no, it's a great facility. Um, you know, had plenty of space to kind of spread out. Parents all had a pretty good viewpoint from their bleachers, so I definitely like the setup as opposed to having math kind of all over the place and trying to figure out where you're going to be next and what goes where. And you no, know, it's a pretty good, pretty well-run tournament this year. Coach, you're back in action at another tournament today. Uh, you at least just got to go across town, don't have to travel. Uh, you're headed up to the Carroll Invite. What's the tournament look for you guys? What's the expectation and goals for the team today? A lot more individual goals for this one. Um, you know, we got quite a few guys that are, are banged up or battling a little sickness here and there. So we're coming in pretty light, um, only bringing eight guys to this tournament. So, you know, that makes it tough in the team race. Um, but we got guys that are just going in, focused on individual titles, you know, individual finals matches. So looking to see a lot of growth there from those guys. As you guys head into the break, what will be the focus, uh, you know, after Saturday and, and, and through the holiday break? Just kind of picking up our pace. Um, you know, we have guys that are in shape and they know how to, you know, know how to shoot a great shot, but they don't apply that pressure yet. And so getting guys to really understand that if they crank their pace up and go, 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 it's going to be hard for guys to stay with them for six minutes. And kind of building that mentality and that attitude of being relentless for six minutes straight is uh, is going to be our focal point. Coach, uh, appreciate you joining us here today. We'll talk to you again coming up. We'll see you later today, of course, out at the uh, Carol Tanker invite. But uh, we'll talk to you again next week as we recap kind of how today went and, and uh, what you guys are going to do for the holidays and stuff. So we'll catch up with you next week. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you. Head Coach Shane Vaughn again with the uh, Kemper Boys Wrestling Team back with more from the Peter Ranch Coaching Show coming up here on KCIM. 
Welcome to the Christmas edition of Between Two Tires, presented by Champion Ford. I'm your host, Kurt Langle, and this year, Champion Ford presents a Christmas poem. It was the night before Christmas, in the car lot so bright, not a creature was stirring, not even a headlight. Cars were all parked in a neat, shiny row, and we assumed soon that someone in a Chevy would need a tow. Kurt, what are you doing? Just take a moment, thank all of our customers for their business in 2023, and wish everyone in our area Merry Christmas and success in 2024. That's it? Doesn't need more sizzle? More pizzazz? You know, these commercials don't always have to be funny. You think they're funny? Meh. From all of us at Champion Ford, thank you for your patronage in 2023. We truly appreciate it and wish you and yours happy holidays and all the best in 2024. Carol's Ford dealer, Champion Ford, where everybody wins. Eric Nagel, the uh, boys wrestling coach of the Carroll Tigers, uh, joining us on this uh, Saturday and a very busy Saturday morning for coaches. They're hosting their invite coming up a little bit uh, later on this morning up at uh, Carroll High. Coach, appreciate you joining us on this crazy busy Saturday for you. <laughs> Thank you. Not a problem. You bet, Coach. You guys, uh, busy week as always. Uh, Saturday uh, looked really, really good early on. Uh, you know, one year pool over there at the Ogden Dual Tournament ended up falling to number four ranked Algona in the championship match. But uh, I felt just uh, from the time I was over there uh, that you guys looked like you were wrestling really well last Saturday. Yeah, yeah. We we came out and wrestled. Pretty pretty decent. I mean, I mean, I'd look at it. Yeah, it's really hard, you know, when you're wrestling that many duels to stay that competitive all the time, and it gets for a long day. But yeah, I thought we wrestled really well until until we ran it out going a little bit and, and kind of got you know got got nipped in the butt a little bit and had to lick our wounds. But overall, I thought we wrestled them pretty handily. A couple matches could have went either way and, and could have been a different turnout. But for the most part, I thought we wrestled well. Like the new setup over there with the new gym where you're not in the wrestling room, the cafeteria, and, and what's now the old gym? God, yes, 100%. <laughs> and the, the, benefit, the, the good thing is we were never in the wrestling room. We've been in the cafeteria before, but we were never in the wrestling room. So I didn't have to worry about sweating, but the cafeteria you had to worry about being cold. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I liked the new setup as well. Uh, the one thing I noticed just because I was shooting video that day was is the new gym's so bright and the old gym's not very bright. So you could definitely tell the difference when I would go from gym to gym on on the video. But uh, a Very good... much so, yeah. That, that, was, that, that was very hard to get used to. You didn't realize what new lighting does. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So who stood out for you? Who did you feel like wrestled well on Saturday? I, I thought our, our upperclassmen wrestled well. I mean, even I, I know Cooper had a, had a loss against the number three kid in the state, but, you know, he gave up some points that he probably shouldn't have. Kale Nelson wrestled well for us. Um, Owen Clucky wrestled lights out, wrestled real tough kid, and him winning 6-1 against the Algona kid. Yep. Um, Owen's been on fire right now. I probably jinxed him right here, but right now he's been wrestling really, really well and stingy. And uh, O-Dub's the type of kid that just likes to go to work and, and do things for us. Um I thought Beckett Hagen jumped in and did well for us this uh, Saturday and, and got us in there and, and you know the, going through the lineup again I, I can I can name off moments where everybody was good but yep. I thought I thought Saturday we wrestled really really well for for the most part team wise together. Coach, you guys were back in action uh, over at Gilbert on Thursday night uh, North Polk along with you really dominant win against Gilbert uh, you guys seemed to to go out and kind of handle them pretty well. Yeah yeah Gilbert. Gilbert's kind of down a little bit, but, you know, Scott does a great job. He's been there forever, and, you know, he's managing boys, both the boys and the girls' team, so that was kind of cool because you had the girls' duel going on on the side, too, and, you know, his coaches do a real good job there, and, and their kids are, are nice and personable, and, and we have a pretty good relationship with them. They have a few kids that our kids like to hang out with and have a good time with, but, you know, we did what we thought we could, get in there and, and get get to business and, and get to work and, and uh, kind of take care of take care of that there which i thought we did and now when we came to north polk not so much but, but that's where we're at <laughs> we talked a little bit last week because you guys had hosted one of those where the girls and, and you were wrestling at the same time what was that atmosphere like on thursday night over there at gilbert um it was a little bit different just because um i don't know i i just our, our home has a unique feel to it and, yep. and i've said that before um i think everybody says that i think even the winter set basketball coach talked about, like, where's the best place to play? And he goes, go to Carroll. It's just, it's a small gym. Everybody's on top of you, you know. So I, I think we benefit from that. Where you go to these 
you know, a little bit bigger school, Gilbert and the North Polk and, and Ballard and Winterset and all these newer gyms. And, and they're just, they're just big. They're just opened up in a lot of space. So we really didn't get to see how the girls were doing because we were wrestling at the same time. So we really didn't get an opportunity to kind of catch with the girls or support the girls. And the girls really didn't have a chance to support with us, but. I think our fan base does well and cheers for both sides. It was a little bit harder this time just because we were wrestling at the same time where we kind of single-handedly said we're just going to wrestle the girls versus the girls and then we'll wrestle the boys, do a lot of the boys. But we also had, they had Dennis in there, Gilbert. Uh, so they were, you know, it was a triangular basically or double duel in there. So that makes it a little bit harder. Coach, you mentioned not a real good match against North Polk last night. Uh, just didn't seem like things went your guys' as way. Well. Yeah, we, we just... We just don't match up with them very well, you know, where our lighter weights, we needed to come out with a couple wins, at least one win in there. We didn't. We bumped some guys around to kind of make that happen. Um, Traven Childress wasn't in the lineup, so that kind of changed some things, but we threw some guys in there and moved it around a little bit and, and thought we could thought we could pull some off in there and then, you know, lost the 32 match, which we shouldn't have, and, and I thought we would have majored it, but we, we lost and, and made some rookie mistakes in there. That kind of disappoints me in there, and then you know, we just where we didn't match up well, and then you get to their upper weights, and I mean, they I think they had three or four seniors that came out that weren't even out last year, so I don't know if they came out as sophomores and decided not to go out as juniors, and they came out as seniors. That that are men. I mean, <laughs> they are men. Uh, I, I would take them and, and play them on the football team any day possible. They were they're they're built and, and they wrestle hard and they wrestle aggressive, and we we just didn't answer in that situation, and that that that. That part kind of disappoints me a little bit. We just got out physical, and and Carol High doesn't get out physical too many times, and I think that probably bothers me the most is that physicality. I I, I preach and we stand hard that we're going to be more physical than any team that we wrestle, and that we want to take you to deep waters and get in the third period where we can wear you out and and, and beat you. And we we just we just got out physical, and and I, I don't like that feeling. That doesn't sit easy with me. Coach, that means you got a chance today to kind of avenge, not maybe against North Polk, but you guys host your own tournament. I think you said 11 teams going to be there today. What's the tournament look like? Yeah, we got 11 teams in there. You know, you got Cam, Carroll, Council Bluffs, Abe Lincoln, Dennison, Slushwood, Green County, Kemper, Manson, Northwest, Webster, Pocahontas, St. Ed, Storm Lake, and uh, Westwood, Sloan. So there, there's a wide variety of misters in there. Some teams have been coming for a long time in there, and then you got some new ones in there. So I think there's going to be some really heated matchups and some really great weight classes that are going to get after it. And looking at their records wise, everybody's kind of even in there. You don't have too many that are, you know, I don't want to say, uh, I don't want to say, you know, too, too high and too low. They're just kind of even records in there. And, and where they're really good, you're going to see some really tough matches. There's going to be some kids in here that, you know, have some one losses and no losses that are going to meet up with each other. And, it's going to be a fun little tournament. I, I, I like this tournament because everybody gets in here and you kind of match up and you can get some wins where, you know, other tournaments you might not get some wins and then your tough kids can get some tougher matches. So um, it's, it's going to be fun. It, it, it always is. As long as, long as track wrestling doesn't break down and things go well, we'll be all right. <laughs> but um, it'll be exciting. It'll be exciting. Three mats and 11 teams and it should be a lot of fun. Well, Coach, we wish you the best of luck. Looking forward to seeing you up there a little bit later on today. Appreciate you joining us here today. Appreciate everything you guys do for us. And as always, go Tigers. Head Coach again, Eric Noggle again with the uh, Carroll Boys Wrestling Team. Hi, I'm Taya Vanami, Recovery Center Director here at Manny Regional Healthcare Center. The holidays can be difficult for those who are struggling with addiction, so we want to share a few tips of how you can support your loved ones who may be fighting substance abuse. Be a positive role model. Make sure they know they're not being judged. Offer drink alternatives. Talk to them clearly and calmly about your concerns. Have a heart-to-heart mentality. Spend quality time with them. Show empathy. Please call us at 712-655-2300 to learn how to live a healthy lifestyle free from drugs and alcohol. Let's talk a little Carol girls at wrestling now here on this uh, Saturday morning here on the Pizza Ranch Coaches Show. We just talked with Coach Noggle about how busy the boys are with their tournament coming up. The girls had a crazy busy week as well. So, Coach, as always, appreciate the time, and congrats on another great week for the girls' wrestling program. 
Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me. You bet. Uh, you guys wrestled last Saturday, you wrestled Monday, and you wrestled Thursday this last week. Let's start with Thursday. You went over to Gilbert, had a double duel over there with you guys and Dennis and Slashwick split on the night. Uh, got a nice win against Dennis and Slashwick, then fell to Gilbert. Um, what did what stood out for you about Thursday night and, and how things went for you and the girls? As far as Thursday, um, you know, I I told the girls earlier in the week that it's going to be a busy week. We just need to keep our head down and wrestle hard. Um, a lot of these teams that we're seeing this week, we, uh, we're going to see at regionals or potentially at state. So just go out there, continue to wrestle, wrestle as hard as you can, and, um, you know, don't stop moving is the biggest thing. And don't count yourself short either, you know. Sometimes we go up against these bigger schools or, you know, they kind of get in their heads about, you know, well, so-and-so has this record. And honestly, at the end of the day, I don't care what the other person's record is. I don't care what school they're from. All it takes is one move, one slip up, and, you know, they get defeated and our girls are on top. And same for us. It's like don't let your guard down and think that, well, I've beaten this girl before. I'm going to walk away. You know, no, you stay humble. And you stay aware and alert, and we'll just, whatever will be, will be, and we'll handle it when it comes. Coach, I talked to Coach Noggle about this, and he said that, you know, you guys wrestled kind of at the same time, so opposite of when you guys hosted Carlisle last week, uh, so you didn't really get a chance to watch each other, support each other, uh, which you guys do so well. But what's it like getting to go to the duels where, you know, the boys are wrestling at the same place, same location, kind of same time? That's got to be fun to have everybody be able to go to just one place. Oh, I love it. Um, You know, I... I know I say it week after week, but we really do have some of the best fans. You kind of can't help but get into it when, you know, you got everyone yelling too and the kids are excited. And um, if the boys get the chance, you know, they, they're they loud and they're proud for the girls and vice versa. We went over and uh, sat down and as much as the team, whoever was showering, but we went and we sat down and we watched the boys. And, you know, they're fun to watch. And those girls are, at that time, they're asking good questions. You know, why didn't he do this or wow, can you believe that he just did this? I want to learn how to do that. You know, they're picking up little pointers, too, just observing, and they get into it, and our guys did really well, and they wrestled hard, and um, at the end of the day, we're just a big family, and we're trying to keep that family dynamic between Nago and I, and I think, you know, it's working, and it just creates a really positive atmosphere at the end of the day. Mentioned the success that you guys had uh, Monday. You were at uh, Saydell's tournament, finished second only to Des Moines Public School, and kind of were nipping on their heels. Uh, just looking at the results here, Sonny McGowan took third, Julia Candy second, Brianna Kiger finished up in second place, Avery Burke was a champion for you, Chloe Jones finished up in fifth, Emma Grossman also finished up in fifth place, and Emma Daniels took second. So had to be really pleased coming out of Saydell on Monday. I was. I'm not going to lie. We kind of surprised ourselves. Um, again, we're going up to, against some of these schools. You know, you throw in um, a school like Ankeny, and they, they're they no joke. They're hard. Um, it's Des Moines Public, it's Humwa, you know, and we've got a bunch of these schools that come rolling up in these buses that are, you know, all decked out in decals, and they've got all of these, you know, big, huge teams, and it's girls kind of get a little bit like, oh, okay, here we go wrestling with the big dogs like we're actually here we go and uh we just put our head down we do we did what we know and that's to go out there and keep moving and not to be looked over and i couldn't ask for anything else um i told him you know win or lose i just want you to go out there and go have some fun i don't care what pressure you want to feel like you you're under you're not under any pressure from me at the end of the day there's going to be a hug waiting for you at the end of the day i'm going to be proud of you just do your best and that's what they did and I think the nerves kind of fell away after that and they wrestled really really well and really hard and they should be super proud of themselves because they did outstanding you guys were at West Monona last Saturday I know you wanted to go up there and win that you fell just short to Central Lion Georgia Little Rock but another second place finish there and 
Uh, you had some champions that day. Sunny McGowan seems to be wrestling really well right now. She took first. Julia Canny, Brianda Kiger were second. Kelsey McCool took third. Haley Vogel was fourth. Avery Burke, another championship. Chloe Jones took second. Uh, Isla Nagel finished in third. Emma Grossman was fourth. And Emma Daniels brought home a championship. What stood out for you, or did any individual stand out for you up there at uh, the tournament last week, Saturday? Um, I think just as a as a team, as a whole, they're really asking good questions amongst themselves. They're, you know, not afraid to get in there and, hey, will you work with me on this? They're staying after practice. Even after two hours of practicing, they're still staying after and they want to do more. Um, you know, sometimes we throw in a morning practice and they're kind of begging or asking that for me even too. And, yep, absolutely, we can make that happen. And pushing themselves a little bit more in the weight room, and I appreciate that because, you know, these kids are actively involved in more than just wrestling, and they've got finals, and they've got a lot of stuff going on, and they they still want more. They're just, they have that hunger, and I think that's amazing, and it's showing on the mat. Um, again, it's not because of any sort of, I don't want to say a reputation or pressure that I'm trying to force on them. It's because they genuinely love this sport, and they really want to do well, and I think that matters a lot in an athlete, so... All I can ask is continue doing what you're doing and continue giving me that dedication and you'll succeed. Sounds like that's going to be the goal for today over at ADM. Chances to compete as a team for a title there today? Um, You know, hopefully. Again, I, I don't want to put any pressure. We kind of had a long week. Yep. Uh, yep. Going from Saturday, Monday, Thursday, today, and then we wrestle again next week right away on Monday. And, um we have some injuries that we're battling with. We have a couple girls out. Some are coming back in and just hoping that, you know, we can get through and, you know, there's hope on the horizon here. We've got a break coming up. We can rest our bodies a little bit, get some much needed rest, all of us, myself included, and, um, you know, look into January and you're up for regionals. Well, Coach, I, I know you're busy here this morning, so I appreciate your time today. I uh, wish you the best of luck coming up today over at ADM and, and again on uh, Monday up at Kemper, and we look forward to catching up with you again next week. Awesome. Thanks so much. Go Tigers. You bet. Head coach again, Samantha Vanami, again the head coach with the Carroll Girls Wrestling Program. Back with more from the Pizza Ranch Coaches Show here on KCIM. Discover the charm of adorable gnomes, the embodiment of good fortune, when you save 25% now on all gnomes at Janine's Hallmark. Plus, new Christmas decor still arriving every day, and box Christmas cards available. However, selection is limited, so don't wait. Stop by Janine's Hallmark in the Westgate Mall today. Open daily until Christmas Eve. We're back here at the Beach Ranch Coaches Show, talking Kemper Girls Basketball. Joining us right now, head coach Andrew Clank. And coach, as always, appreciate the time. Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate you. You bet. Kind of a slow week for you guys as far as game-wise. Just a game on Tuesday, but you do have another one coming up this afternoon. Nick Brinks will have the broadcast for us over at Green County later on today, but a good week for you. You come off a 61-51 to victory down in Atlantic on Tuesday night. Coach, happy with that performance, I get the sense? Yeah, you know, uh, <laughs> it's kind of been a long week. Uh, we, we've had some time to really work on ourselves. Um, but you know, that game Tuesday night was, was, it was a battle. Um, I thought we did a really good job of, of putting things together that we've been working on to get better at. Um, you know, Atlantic took advantage of what, what they got. Um, it was kind of a back and forth up and down game between the two of us for three quarters. And, um, you know, by that fourth quarter, we kind of just got some things figured out, got some stops, uh, got some buckets, uh, to, to decrease their lead and put us ahead and, you know, kudos to to the girls for for really uh, you know in taking that moment and running with it. Um, they saw an opportunity and, and took full advantage of it, which was good to see from us from our standpoint because uh, we've had some of those opportunities and we just haven't taken full advantage, especially early on in the season. And um, you know, hopefully now we're starting to see that. What change do you think where the girls grabbed a hold of it this time? Uh, well, we kind of upped our intensity uh, on the defensive end. Uh, we went a little full court. Um, you know, we usually were, were a little more three quarter court, kind of slow things down and look to get some traps. So we, we got a little more aggressive. And then on the offensive end, you know, a lot of it was just, you know, taking pride in, in what they do, uh, being a little more confident on the floor, uh, and, and seeing the floor, seeing their teammates. I think we, in the fourth quarter, ended up with, I think, 10 or 11 assists. So, you know, we, we found our teammates, we found ourselves, um, you know, 
from multiple uh, aspects of the of the game. Elsa finished with 31, best game of the season for her scoring wise. Outside shooting, dribble drive, catching, and 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 scoring off of uh, you know offensive rebounds, kind of a combination to thing. What worked best for her that night? You know, in the 31 sticks out. You know, see that in the stat line. But you know, for her it was. You know, she had, I think, six rebounds. She had five assists, six assists, um, maybe one turnover, um, you know, five or six steals. You know, a lot of those the stat stuff are um, stats that don't necessarily, you know, hit the front page, but at the same time they're huge for us. Um, you know, getting rebounds in clutch moments, you know, getting deflections, getting steals, um, making that extra pass when, you know, you're getting another defender to pick you up. Um, you know, she did obviously – did a really good job of putting the ball in the hoop um, from the outside, from the from the inside, from the free throw line. I think she finished ten of fourteen from the free throw line. Um, but you look at some of her supporting cast, and you know they they took advantage of getting those opportunities from her. Um, you know, getting getting layups, getting kick out threes, um, you know, getting dump off passes for for a you know an extra pass that ended up you know assist to an assist. So um, you know, seeing that from her was good to see her growth in, in the game and how she's starting to. You know, be a little more confident and starting to see the floor um, a little bit more uh, confidently as a whole. Coach, you mentioned uh, kind of those stats that stuff that not everybody always talks about. We do on the radio, by the way. But uh, Lauren Bell uh, grabbing some really good rebounds for you guys this year and had another good rebounding night the other night against Atlantic. Yeah, you know, she 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 sees the ball really well. She sees it off the rim really well. She reacts. Um, she's one, I mean, one of our quickest, quickest girls on the team and she, she sees the ball off the, off the backboard, off the, off the rim really well. And she goes and she gets it. Um, she's strong and athletic. If Franny's the same way, um, you know, two of our best rebounders and it's not that they're tall by any means, you know, they're not six, one, um, you know, six, two, they're just out there and they see ball, they, they get good contact and they, they grab a board and they're strong with it. And it's huge for us because, you know, one of our big goals is limiting second chance opportunities, and, and by getting rebounds, especially on the defensive end, is huge to not allow a team to get a second or third chance at, at getting a bucket. Coach, uh, as we mentioned, that game Atlantic Tuesday was the only game you had this week until today. What'd you focus on in practice Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? You know, I was focusing on ourselves. Um, you know, adding in a couple wrinkles here and there. Um, on the defensive end and on the offensive end, uh, getting a little more confident in what we're doing, um, you know, getting shots up, getting in, getting ourselves in that right mindset of you know where we need to be because you know we finish out before break with four games. Uh, we go Saturday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. So have to have ourselves ready to play basketball, be able to switch things up on a night in night out basis, and you know be able to execute at the highest level possible. What are you looking at with the matchup today over at uh, Green County? What do you what do you want to see from the girls to keep that role that you started on Tuesday night going? Play within ourselves. Um, you know, that was one thing I wrote on the board against Atlantic um, in pregame was just you know don't try to do anything more than you're not capable of doing. Um, stick within your role. Stick within what you're capable of and and really flourish in that in that aspect. Um, so for us, it's you know how do we continue to to build as a team? Um, you know, we had some really good um, senior leadership in Kate Mayhall last year. And I think one thing for us to keep building on is just that chemistry aspect after having, you know, Kate as part of our leadership, Um, you know, that chemistry on the floor, the five on the floor, the the girls on the bench, you know, all bleeding together um, to, to build that strong bond of, we know what's going on. We trust each other. We trust, you know, the girl off the bench. So, you know, I think for us, it's, you know, work on ourselves, um, don't try to go out of our way to, to do anything we're not capable of, um, but trust it, trust one another. And, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a long season and there's going to be ups. There's going to be downs. We've got to be able to pick each other up throughout the whole thing. Well, coach, as always, it's great to catch up with you. Appreciate the time here today. Best of luck coming up over at Green County and looking forward to catching up with you next week. I know I've got the game for sure on Friday night. I can't remember what else I've got next week, but I know I do have you guys on Friday night. All right. Sounds good, Jeff. I appreciate it. You bet. Head coach again, Andrew Klink with the Kimber Girls basketball team. Back with more from the Peach Ranch Coaches Show right here on KCIM. 
Paid for by Christian Care Ministry. So right now may be the perfect time for you to rethink how you pay for health care. And here's why. Not only is it open enrollment for a lot of people, it's also a time you can join MediShare and save even more than usual. For many families, switching to MediShare saves about $500 a month, which is a game changer for a lot of people. And what's more, they like it. MediShare has double the member satisfaction rate compared to health insurance. Double. MediShare is a proven thing, too, for over 30 years. It's a Christian community of more than 400,000 members. And here's the thing. If you join before December 15th and you mention the promo code SHARE, you'll get another 10% off all of 2024. That's 12 months of savings. So I'll give you the number here in a second. The call, you'll get a price within two minutes. And again, the deadline's December 15th. So call now. You'll save even more. Here's the number. 855-51-BIBLE. That's 855-51-BIBLE. 855-51-BIBLE. Welcome back here on the Pete Ranch Coaches Show. Jeff Blankman joined right now, of course, by Sean Minahan uh, with the uh, Kemper Boys basketball team. Another outstanding week for the Knights, uh, going 2-0 and since the last time we chatted last Saturday with a win last Saturday afternoon. Had to hold on to beat a very good Van Meter Ball Club, 62-61, and then uh, headed out uh, on the road down to Atlantic on Tuesday and picked up a 72-54 victory. Coach, uh, congrats. A fantastic start to the season. You guys have won, I think, five in a row now. Uh, Got to really be pleased with the way this team's starting to play. Yeah, I mean, I think we, we've been figuring some stuff out this year, and, and um, I think the one thing you can't fault our kids for in, in all of our games is, is the effort they've given, so I've been really pleased with that. Built a big lead against Van Meter, especially it looked like in that third quarter. Uh, what did you guys do to get up by 15 against a, a pretty darn strong ball club? Really good ball movement, hit some shots, and then I think uh, defensively our guys just really were playing really, really well. Um, give gave us some turnovers, some some transition points. So I, I think that was working really well for us. We got up 15, we we're up 55 to 40 on them. Um, so that was one of those things where we were really excited. Um, I, we need to be able to finish that game off better because we went we went ice cold there in the fourth quarter and 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 kind of squeaked that one out. Was that the biggest thing for you guys in the fourth quarter? Shots just stopped falling? Yeah, I mean, I think we still created some good looks. Um, we settled a couple of times, but, I mean, we have a bunch of good shooters that were still taking rhythm shots, um, and, and they didn't go down for us. And A couple of them went in and out. Uh, we got a couple of looks at the rim that we weren't able to finish, um, and then we got to the free throw line several times and weren't able to capitalize there. So, that was disappointing. Um, you kind of want to have that killer instinct of of when the game's right there. If you have a 15 point lead right at the end of the third quarter, you want to be able to push, extend that out into the 20s. Um, we were not able to do that, but that also just shows there. Um, you know, I joked around with the coach ahead of time. Is the one thing about football players, that a successful football program like that that they have with what back to back state championships is, those kids are mentally tough and they're not going to be down and out, so you can't really get those kids to quit. Um, they're going to keep fighting, and that's what they did. They came back and battled, and but our guys, guys were able to hold on at the end, and, and we had a really good defensive possession at the last 25 seconds of the game to close it out. You sounded like kind of a mad scramble there at the very end. Yeah, we switched up our defense. We played man the whole game and switched to his own um, just to throw him off because we knew, they called a timeout, and we knew they were setting up a play for a – from man defense, and we didn't want to run any, take any chances of, of missing something, so we switched to his own defense. Uh, they used a second timeout to call a different play. We stayed with it and got a hand on the ball. They got it off the tip, got a shot off, <laughs> and it bounced around off the rebound, and they caught another one and got another, had, went to shoot it again at the end, and then DJ got a block at the end to close it out. So kind of prevented that uh, – the, the unfortunate bank shot against Carroll High. It, it had momentary flashbacks to that for for a second, but DJ made sure that, that ended really quick when he blocked it. Coach, uh, you took that defensive and intensity there on that last play and kind of used it second half uh, against Atlantic on the road. You guys hold them to just 18 points in the entire second half. They scored almost that many in the first quarter and then more than that in the second. Uh, what, what changed for you guys defensively in the second half against Atlantic? Um, just an intensity and being locked in. Um, I thought our, that starting five did a really good job of even in the first half, we were getting up to t- a 10 point, we'd extend the, the 10 and 12 point leads in the first half. 
Um, and then we'd go on a scoring drought, and they'd hit a couple threes and get themselves back in it. They weren't a great shooting team coming in, but they hit six threes against us in the first half. Half um, The Colton Rasmussen kid's a very, very good basketball player. Um, he was averaging 26 points, over 26 points, almost 27 points going in. He had 16 in the first half, so our big thing is we challenged him in the second half and, and just said, guys, he can't. We, we It's got to be a team effort when he starts – to drive and penetrate we have to attack him early and make his shots more uncomfortable and he and we did he didn't score in the second half so i was extremely pleased with our, our defensive effort because we it was a three-point game at halftime and then we uh we, we really ran away with it and, and took care of business in the third quarter and then it continued in the fourth coach uh, you guys are going to have some changes in the lineup coming up now haven't really talked about it much with you this season but uh um, a DJ now done uh, for the year, went ahead and had the surgery. Hate to bring those kind of things up, but how's that changed this ball club going forward? Um, you know, offensively, honestly, it doesn't change much of anything. We, we, we're we running a, a Princeton-based offense this year that does focus around the high post, and the high post plays a very uh, important part. But knowing that, we, we only rep Carter Putney at that position, and then Hans Kraus has been repping that spot for us too. So those two will still be, honestly, the kind of the center point of our offenses, and then just the the four guards are interchangeable around that. Whoever we're playing with, so it allows us to play kind of that hot hand offensively. Um, but I mean, Carter Putney's done an absolutely phenomenal job at that spot for us, and he's he's averaging double figures, and he's um, been really really efficient and shooting a high percentage for us. So. Um, I'm really excited to see his growth and development continue because, you know, he, his background was as a guard. But um, with Evan and DJ um, having the injuries that they had, we knew we had to change some stuff, and, and Carter stepped into that role, and I could not be happier with that. So biggest change we got to figure out is defensively just because, you know, it's, you can't really replace six foot four and, and the 37-inch vertical and just the Division one athlete. You can't replace that. So um, it's just going to be a team effort of – continuing to work for rebounds and and continuing to work with on-ball pressure and we've we've been pressing teams a lot this year creating a lot of turnover so i'm excited to build on that coach you guys back in action today over at jefferson to take on green county later this afternoon we'll have that game for everybody um what are you looking at there they haven't won a game yet but that doesn't always mean that a team's not got some potential yeah, I mean, size-wise, they match up. We we match up well with them. Usually, we're, we've been kind of the, un, the smaller team every game out. Um, with the other team, usually having some kids in the six-four range, but their tallest kid, I think, six foot two, um, that plays for them. So, size-wise, we match up pretty well with them. They're going to want to play five out offensively. They want to play two-three zone on defense. They'll spread you out a little bit, but um, with that, we just need to work on our zone offense and attack gaps because there's some gaps to attack and. And when we got open shots, we need to be able to shoot them. I mean, usually we, we kind of lick our chops when we see a zone defense because um, we have so many good shooters on our team. The biggest thing is just consistently being able to shoot the ball at a high percentage because we're so far this year we've been shooting really well in the 45 50% range from three as a team. And then the next game we're shooting like 20% and only having six three. So um, I told our guys, like, we want to still have those highs, but our lows can't be down in the 20s. We need to be a little bit more efficient with our shots. So, um, that's something I really want to see this afternoon. Well, Coach, as always, we appreciate the time here on this Saturday morning. Best of luck coming up later today. Look forward to catching up with you again next week. Yes, thanks, Jeff. Thanks for And thanks for your coverage all year. You bet. And again with the Kemper Boys basketball team, we'll be back with more from the Pizza Ranch Coaches Show here on KCIM. Here at Pizza Ranch, we love our basketball. Just like you love everyone's favorite buffet. Hot, fresh pizza, the country's best chicken, fresh, cool salad bar, and dessert options that are so good, it's like sinking the winning shot at the buzzer. Pizza Ranch is a perfect meal option every day of the week. And to make it even sweeter, we have extended hours every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Whoa, that's good. Pizza Ranch, located just off Highway 30 in Carroll, open seven days a week. Thanks for joining us here on this Saturday morning on the Pizza Ranch Coaches Show. And as always, thank to all of our coaches, uh, Katie Cook, Randy Beeson, Tracy Hoffman, Deb Danner, Shane Vaughn, Eric Nagel, Sam Vanami, Andrew Klink, 
and also Sean Minahan. Now, we will be back next Saturday morning again from 8 till sometime after 9 o'clock as we'll have another Pizza Ranch Coaches show here on KCM as we do have teams playing all the way up. Kemper girls and boys basketball team play the 22nd, so this coming Friday night. So, we'll, again, we'll have sporting events pretty much all week from some of our area teams, and we'll talk to those coaches again, these coaches right here that we talked to this morning again next Saturday. Now, speaking of Kemper basketball, they are at Green County this afternoon. Nick Brinks again has got that broadcast on Kick 106.7. That game uh, getting underway today with the girls game at around 1 o'clock, so pregame coverage around 1245. Lots of wrestling going on today. Carroll Boys Wrestling Team has their invite going on up at Carroll High this morning. Kemper Boys are going to be wrestling at that. That'll get underway at 10 o'clock. ESAC Boys are at the Cherokee Tournament beginning at 10 o'clock. Carroll Girls go to the ADM Invite beginning at 10 o'clock. Audubon Boys are at the Western Iowa Conference Individual Tournament at Riverside beginning at 10 o'clock. South Central Calhoun Boys and Coon Rapids Baird Boys go to the Ridgeview Dual Tournament at 9 this morning. And the South Central Calhoun Girls and ESAC Girls are at the Boone Tournament, also beginning at 9 o'clock this morning. That's going to wrap up this Pizza Ranch Coaches Show. Have a great weekend, everybody.